Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. So today we're going to patch this nasty blowout here and we're going to use just tape and mud. So under some circumstances you could actually cut out the damaged drywall here and replace a chunk and then just tape it like a little patch but I want to illustrate just how much you can actually do with just tape and quick set and have it still be a nice strong sturdy patch. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a nice sharp blade and cut out all this kind of stuff. You don't want all this stuff flapping around here. So that's looking a lot better. There's nothing there that's flapping around that's gonna cause a blister. So I am back. I've just mixed up some quick set with a little glue in it. You can watch my video on that to get the idea as to why I put the glue in. I've got some paper tape. Get a nice sharp edge on there. Okay, so what we need is three chunks of paper tape that are gonna go just past here and here. So we want it to go at least an inch past on each side. So, one, two, and one for the horizontal, right here. So next, let's start taping this. So here's what we're gonna do. What you're doing is you're basically creating a little mini piece of drywall. So I'll often just use the wall and what I'll do is I'll just put a big swath of mud on there. So this tape now has about a quarter inch of mud covering it. So when I now put that right here, so I'm going to line it right up with the box, not so far down that it covers these holes, and I'm going to start embedding this tape. I have a horrible angle to try and do this because the camera is where I want to be. So next, let's do this side again. This one I'm going to try and get a ton of mud on because I want easily a solid quarter inch or more of mud on the back side of this. So there we go. Lots of mud. And this one I'm actually going to go just a little bit past this edge. I actually want this to touch right here. And now, just for insurance, we're going to do this side. Although, to be honest, I could probably just fill in this side and it wouldn't crack out. Just to be sure, we'll put some tape on it. Actually, I'm going to fill that full of mud before I do this. So I'm leaving just a little bit of mud under the tape, just enough to bond it. Look at this, like paper mache. Okay, how's it sitting for flush? Not bad. Let me get a little more out of there. Okay, so that is good. This is 20 minute mud. I'm gonna come back when it's fully set up because if I try and coat it right now, What's gonna happen is this part right here that's sort of flapping in the air could move out a bit and I could wind up with like an eighth inch hump here that I have to cover. So we're gonna leave this until the quick set is totally set. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The quick set's all hardened up. It's ready for another coat. See if standing on this side of the camera works a little better. So just a liberal coat over top. Right now I'm starting with about an eighth of an inch of mud over top of everything. And I sort of put it on gently to try and avoid slopping too much into here because you just have to clean it out later and the electricians don't like it. Although they're used to it. So now I'm just gonna smooth it down. Keep my inside corners clean. Feather my edge. Feather my edge. passing. So this coat is fairly liberal. Again, I started with about an eighth. I've now got maybe close to an eighth over this part of it and then fanned out to nothing about a foot past each way. That's what it takes to actually make this disappear. It's actually just a butt joint. So now I'm going to let this one set up. Also, you could do this whole thing with all-purpose mud if you wanted, but this heavy part behind the tape here would take forever to dry. So I really like to do this with quick set because it sets up, doesn't shrink, 
and goes a lot faster. So the quick set is now all set up. I've got some regular all-purpose mud mixed up here. Now, the first thing I need to do is scrape this all down. And if you were using regular pre-mixed bucket mud for this whole thing, this would be the point where you just sand down or scrape your second coat. Clean those corners out. And this line, if you're wondering right here, is just a shadow that's being cast by this little column. But, you keep scraping. You especially want it nice and flat around here, because if you haven't done a nice job patching all around this, then when you go to put your face plate on, you can see big gaps. It doesn't look nice. So this part's got to be nice and flat. And you don't want your quick set crumbs getting into your regular mud. They won't soften up and get into the mix nicely. They'll just stay crumbs. Okay, that's looking good. Time to put some regular mud on it. Same process, basically. Oh, giant crumbs. Hate those. So I'm just going a couple inches past the quick set. And if possible, you want to put a generous coat over the quick set, a good sixteenth of an inch by the time it's all taken off, because the quick set doesn't sand nicely compared to the regular mud and you don't want to be sanding through your regular mud into the quick set or the quick set won't sand your regular mud will and you're going to get weird ridging and shadows. Make sure I have mud everywhere. Get the crumbs out. Okay, so this mud was just freshly mixed. I'm not getting any bubbles, it's real nice. Okay, and I'm gonna stop messing with it. Even though it could be a little more perfect, I can sand that out. Let's take a close look. So my finished coat wound up going pretty far down. I am almost at about a three foot long patch here. So for just this little box, I coated it pretty big to make it disappear. So now that it's dry, let's see how strong it is. So I'm not seeing any little cracks, nothing showed up, so I can knock on that pretty hard. In fact, my knuckles got a tiny bit sore, so it's strong. So now it's just time to give it a quick sand. Detail it with a sponge. Now you can just carve this stuff out with a knife. Make sure you have your power off so that you don't go into any live wires by accident. Alright, they can get into the screws in both of them, so we're all done. So I hope that sheds a little light on how to patch that blown out or overcut electrical box. It's a fast, effective, and durable patch when done properly. So whether you had a sloppy tradesman in or you decided to hang your drywall yourself, now you know what to do. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Until the next video.